Hey everyone! Today uh, I'm making a video about this, which is a Gran Turismo 4 press kit. Uh, I've had it for a while, but I haven't really had a chance to make a video about it yet. So I thought I'd uh, I'd combine a video of showing you all the contents with uh, some actual gameplay at the end. Um, I actually got this from eBay a long time ago, uh, but they do show up from time to time, so if you're looking to get one for yourself then that's probably one of the best places to look. Um, and when I actually ordered mine, it's, it's really weird, it actually came packaged in uh, like a box for a light fitting. Uh, for a minute I thought I'd been scanned, and it was, it's really really heavy as well, and I'll show you why once we get inside. So I'm really happy to actually own a copy, and uh, I just want to share it with you guys. So let's have a look. So. I don't know if you can see from here, but this is number 593 out of 4,000. So there were 4,000 of these kits distributed to the press. Um, just so they could write about the game and probably show some screenshots on the articles that they write and on the websites. Um, but obviously these kits have uh, fallen into the hands of collectors like myself these days. So yeah, very cool. So the main reason why it's so heavy... Uh, well, you won't be able to see it yet. It's it's underneath all this actually. So I'll include some screenshots in the actual video, uh, just so you can have a better look at things. But what it includes is uh, a passport, really. Um, so this is a, I guess, a passport cover. There's not that much inside. It has uh, two uh, postcards, which I think you can see there. Um, there's also a racing calendar for the year 2005. Obviously uh, not much use now, but it's still a nice thing to have. So every month is just kind of annotated with uh, a screenshot from the game, which is pretty nice. Um, see if I can show you one more there. There you go. Um, and then you've got two discs. You have a press disc, which we will take a look at later and also a test drive build of the game. Now I've never actually played this so I can't really tell you what's on it but again I will show you some gameplay footage after so we can find out. And then if you take off the whole first level of this um, you get a, an official launch certificate. I'll scan that in and uh, I'll get a proper screenshot made of that as well. And Hang on. This is why it's so heavy. Oh, a huge book called Driving the Game. Now I'm not sure if this was actually sold separately, but I have seen it in other places, uh, not just uh, in this press kit. But it just kind of tells you some information about the game. Um, it's annotated with photos, as you can see, of the tracks. Uh, some historical screenshots of the first Gran Turismo there. Uh, I'm sure there's footage of the second game, if I can find it. Oh, there we go. So there's some GT2. That's GT1 over there, I think. And um, some of Gran Turismo 3. So yeah, just stuff like that, really. I've not really got time to show you um, every single page. Um, but no, it's a nice thing to have. So anyway, let's get on with the discs. Okay, so I've copied the files from the press disk to my computer now, so it's time to see what's on them. In the first file, uh, there's loads of cars, uh, all from the final version of the game, but some really nice shots of them, uh, not in action or anything, just the car models themselves. So I'll go through them quickly here, just to show you, uh, but you can pause the video and look at any single one of them in more detail if you like. Yeah, so we've got the Caterham, Chaparral, I always loved those cars. Um, yeah, I think every car here exists on the game. I don't, I can't see any that were cut, or at least none that spring to mind for me. But if you do spot any, then please do let me know. Or perhaps any differences between the models uh, from what's here to on the final version of the game. 
So as I say, there are quite a lot to get through here. Some cars you'll recognise from the other games, like Gran Turismo Concept, Gran Turismo 3. Uh, and some cars, like the Model T, I don't think would uh, appear on another Gran Turismo game again. So, coming to the end now, I think. As I say, there's loads to get through here, so I will just run through them quickly. <coughs> um, just about there, oh the Jaguar, love that car. And there we go, that's the start. Okay, so the next folder is called Development Information. Not really much information about it, I'll be honest, they're just pictures. So there's some uh, dashing shots of Kazunori there. I'm not quite sure why they're on this disc, but hey, why, why not? And then you've actually got some uh, photos of the office, actually, uh, from where they developed the game. So there's Kaz at work again, at least I think it was. Um, it looks really good, actually. I love, uh, I love that tree on that shot. I think that looks great. I'd love to have that in my office. Yeah, image of the whole team there, or at least some of them. And that one's quite interesting, because you can see that I assume that any employee can just go and play any of the former Gran Turismo games whenever they feel like it. Or maybe it breaks. Anyway, so the next folder uh, shows a shot of the Nürburgring uh, in the game compared to what it looks like in real life. So you can compare uh, how kind of good a job they did on the circuit at the time. And here you've got some more screenshots from the game. It's quite a weird uh, format. It almost looks like it was shot on a, a mobile phone. <laughs> But I guess that's just the, uh, that's just what they went for. So again, I think I think you can probably find these on the internet. It wouldn't surprise me uh, if they were, because I think they're probably quite heavily distributed before the game came out. As I say, this is the kind of thing that the press would have got before the game's release, so would have kind of annotated their articles and uploaded screenshots to their websites at the time. And there we go. So the logo. Um, the developer logo, I can't open that file format unfortunately, but I'm sure it's nothing too interesting. <laughs> and then you've just got the Gran Turismo 4 logo. So you have some shots from the making of the game as well, so... Um, all these shots kind of on location, here in uh, Italy as far as I know. Um, <laughs> I think there's Kaz, is it Kaz? Or, or the hay bale. Uh, Grand Canyon, I presume. Uh, is that Sakuba? I'm not sure, that's just my best guess. Uh, I'll show you some of the cars that would actually appear in the game. We get some sounds, taking some pictures of them so they could model them. Um, what else? A field? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure of the relevance of all of these. I presume that's the Nobe Brink. Uh, shot of the city there. Um, that's the start. Okay, so now we have two movies. Um, Gran Turismo 4 trailer and the Gran Turismo 4 E3 trailer. Let's check them out.
Okay, so now um, we've got a press release here that's specifically about Beast Bet Mode. Uh, obviously it was new to the series at this point, uh, but if you can remember, it was where essentially the computer would drive for you and you would kind of manage them uh, in terms of how hard they were pushing, uh, when they needed to come into pit, uh, for pit stops. Um, if I remember right, I think you could take over as a driver for a certain period of time if you needed to. So I think my favourite line from this press release is uh, Kazunori saying The Grand Turismo you can play while enjoying a cup of coffee. Yes. So that's what video gaming is all about. Okay. And I think that's about it for that one. Now you've got more screenshots from the game. Um, there's absolutely loads here. Um, and as I say, I think you can probably find them all on the internet. But, whatever. I'll take you through the mall anyway.
Okay, so we've finally been through all of those screenshots. I went through them as quick as possible, obviously you can pause the video and uh, take a look at them in greater depth. Okay, so now you have uh, another document uh, which is all about the music that would appear in the game. Um, so obviously if you're in the game, there probably won't be any surprises here, you'll probably recognise most of these. Uh, but obviously this was important information to have before the release of the game, if journalists wanted to kind of talk about that kind of thing in their articles. So, And then uh, there's also a document about uh, photo mode, which again was new at that time. Uh, I did I did enjoy photo mode to a degree. I don't think I used it like the whole lot, but it was kind of a nice alternative, nice break from racing for a while. So it's pretty cool. Um, this is kind of more of a standard press release about the entire game. Um, so one one point that did kind of catch my eye here was the uh, ten additional cars for the PAL version. Uh, PAL is uh, the European release. Um, I didn't actually know there were any extra cars on this version of the game, and obviously me uh, being from Europe, uh, it was always the game that I played when I was younger. So without knowing it, I think I had some extra content, which which was pretty cool. So obviously you can see there for yourself like which cars uh, were actually added to uh, the European version of the game, and uh, whether you actually missed out without knowing about it. So on to the next one, you have some fun facts. I mean, why not? Could uh, add an interesting article, I guess, about them. Um, one thing that kind of got me on this one was uh, the Falcon and Audi teams used Gran Turismo to train drivers ahead of uh, Nürburgring 24 hours race in 2004 and obviously you know, Gran Turismo actually kind of trained their own drivers nowadays starting with the console and actually moving on to proper cars so it's really interesting how it kind of started there and then uh, you've got top 10 cars as well now I should just say that these aren't really the top 10 cars in terms of out and out performance just kind of uh, like a top 10 milestones in motoring really, regarding cars that were actually included on the game. So you can pause the video and kind of read these yourself, but um, things like the first car to be named after a video game, I didn't even know there was a, a 350Z Gran Turismo 4 edition, but hey, why not, I do now. Um, and so I think that's, that's about it for that one. And, at the end of every document you've kind of got the uh, notes to editors about Sony and about polyphony. So yeah. Uh, then you've got one final folder that shows uh, shots of the game in development, so kind of how tracks and cars are built up from start to finish really. Uh, just some kind of cool shots really. So, again, you can probably find these on the internet. And uh, I think that just about wraps it up. So next time, we'll go through the actual gameplay disc. Thanks for watching.